Hello and welcome. This is Prep to Thrive. And today we'll be making spaghetti squash spaghetti. Joining me today is my little brother, Ben. Little brother. All right, let's get started. I'm hungry. All right, so what is the first steps on this guy? Well, as you can see, we're, we're doubling it up because I've got teenagers and, and some men to feed. So uh, I'm, I'm figuring this is going to be eight generous portions once we get this all going. And what we got in the pan is grass-fed beef. And we're just going to bust it up like we're making regular spaghetti, like we've made since we were like 12. One of the uh, guys that I follow when he's talking about grass-fed beef, I mean, mm -hmm. if, you, if that's all you can... If all you can get is what's there at Walmart, I'm assuming that that's fine. I was listening to this guy who's basically saying, you know, what you want is a cow that's lived a really happy life and had one bad day, if possible. <laughs> so we'll get this started browning, and I like to go ahead and throw in uh, my onions. I'm just, I'm putting in a whole onion. I feel like if we add a whole lot of extra vegetables to this, it'll make, um, it'll break up the texture of the final uh, spaghetti squash mixture. How many times have you done this? Um, Is this a go-to meal for you? I've, I've made a lot of spaghetti squash, but right now I've got so many spaghetti squash coming out of our garden that... Um, it's great to start using them up. All right, while this starts cooking on like medium, I medium low, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna cook up a second spaghetti squash. I've had the first one already cooked. The spaghetti squash out of my garden, <laughs> we've got ones that are about two pounds or one kilogram, and then this one is already cooked, so it's, it's, I was not expecting that to be warm when I picked it up. I was like, ah! Warm and squishy. Um, that one is about double this size and it's been cooked in the microwave for about 16 minutes. You and your alien eggs. While Ben keeps that stirred, I'm going to poke some holes in this smaller spaghetti squash. Um, if you use the microwave method on these these things, you need to make sure that they're well vented because I had one explode. It actually <laughs> blew the door of the microwave open when a chunk uh, came off the side of it and there was strings of spaghetti squash everywhere. It, it was a huge mess. And of course, nobody likes a surprise like that in the kitchen. <laughs> so yeah, make sure that you Put in um, quite a few little little holes and try to pierce it pretty deep. Normally, you do not have to wear safety goggles to cook in the same kitchen with my sister. She's pretty amazing. Aww. <laughs> Just that one time. That one time. I'm I'm more of a danger to myself. Might not want to highlight my lack of knife skills. <laughs> Could you not use a fork or something like that? No, they're too hard. That's what I figured. Hard. Mm, get a plate. And you don't salt this or anything while it's cooking, right? I don't, but that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be better. <laughs> I mean, I, I imagine there's probably some salt in one of these, uh, sauces. Oh, Why don't you go ahead and tell us about the sauces. All right. To stay compliant with the Whole30 diet, you cannot consume added sugar. And so uh, there's, there's a couple of ready-made brands that can help you out with the no added sugar. Um, and surprisingly, some of them aren't the, the most expensive brand. This one is, is pretty good. This one's another one that doesn't have added sugar as of the, this date. You can always use your own homemade um, if you've had time and a uh, pro prolific garden. Um, but my tomato plants just haven't liked this year at all. I don't really know what's going on. 
enjoying this stainless steel. I don't have a lot of stainless steel pots and pans at my house. I just have like a tried and true cast iron that, I don't know, you, you, could, you wind up developing what is your favorite pan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's kind of what I wind up using for everything. That and I've got an induction stove, which I gotta say, like if you're browning meat or, or cooking a steak, uh, like a flat iron steak, and you've got an electric range, like, you gotta have cast iron, otherwise you can't get a, like, a sear on anything. Mm -hmm. no idea. This is starting to look brown. Yeah, uh, go ahead and dump in the bell pepper. Bell pepper? Yeah. How much? All of it. it oh, or how much was it? Yeah, sure. It was an entire bell pepper. My hands are clean. <laughs> I'll trust you. Green pe bell pepper, red bell pepper, doesn't matter. Reason why you went with the yellow. I think it's pretty. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. Yeah. Well, I didn't okay. want it to be red, it would just blend in. And I didn't want it to be green because they don't, I don't think they taste this good. <laughs> you got a kid that acts like they you know, only bell pepper. You can convince them they're tomatoes if you put them in and they're red. <laughs> Your kids aren't that dumb. <laughs> Sorry. They're not that dumb? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That sounded terrible. <laughs> that sounded terrible. My niece and nephew are brilliant. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> they're eight and six, so... Brilliant as an eight and six year old can be. There, I can I can concur with that. <laughs> you can go ahead and add in the mushrooms. All right, add in mushrooms. Was, this was a, was a whole pack of mushrooms, but I ate some, so for a little short. All right. I like some mushrooms. Do you like mushrooms? Absolutely. They are phenomenal low carb option. There's always one. Uh -oh. It's like the ice and a drink that just kind of sits there waiting until you tip to a certain point and then they all attack your face all at the same time. That's why I avoid ice. I'm assuming I'm just like yeah, chopping just, at these guys. You can just break them up a little bit. To me it's weird to eat spaghetti anything and have giant like mushrooms in there. Really? I don't know. I mean, I don't want them tiny. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely like breaking them. They cook down a little bit. But... All right. So when I make this keto style for Barry, I leave all the fat in there. What's your What's your fat preference with this dish? Uh. Hey, you see, that's one of those things. Like, my wife would be like, "That's got to go," because. Weirdly enough, like, fat and beef, she'd be like, that's a hard pass, that's a hard no. Um, but rendered fat, I, I make steaks and I like smoking meats. And so I know that, like, rendered fat, that's where the flavor is. Um, so when you're like, I leave it all in, I'm like, all right. Like, but weirdly enough, like, she'll eat gravy, uh, gravy like sausage gravy. Yeah. Which is just the grease. Yeah, it's the grease. You just throw in your flour. Um, see, that's the problem. Is like that's when I had to do like whole thirty. It's it's not because uh, yeah, you know my issue is I know how to make good food and and basically butter and salt make the world go round. <laughs> so uh, it was it was difficult to me uh, when I did whole thirty to actually you know start eating a little bit more holistically and the idea that i could even start eating the fat was uh it was a little weird to me and a little foreign that that would be cool with any kind of diet i definitely feel less bad about the fat content from grass-fed meats because the, the um, omega-3 omega-6 balance is a little bit better 
when you're getting the grass fed. Over my head. So what what are we talking about when we're actually talking about omega threes and omega sixes? Again, I'm just somebody who enjoys cooking food, obviously. I'm trying to get smaller. What are these and, and how do they play into weight loss goals and whatnot? Like. Um so uh, omega sixes and omega threes are both naturally occurring fats. Um, they, they can be in plant-based foods or in animal-based animal foods, but the standard Western diet has a high six to three ratio, and um, that's a pro-inflammatory state. So if you want to have less inflammation in your body, we're going to try and correct that ratio. So, so what could I do to correct that ratio a little better? You can eat things like fish and uh, pastured animals tend to have a better ratio. Um, mainly, mainly fish. Uh, flax seeds and um, hemp and chia, they're a little bit better than some of the other nuts and seeds but just as far as whole foods go so um, how close is that thing to exploding <laughs> it should not explode I mean it is bubbling it's kind of acting like it would like to explode but so that was 10 minutes let's see how soft it is So listen, I am willing to try this grease and all if you claim that that is the better way to do this. Depends on how afraid of saturated fat you are. <laughs> I mean... I, I am not afraid of saturated fat, and that may be a problem. <laughs> that's what brains are made out of, right? <laughs> Maybe. I don't that's I'll take your word for it. Actually, it's made out of cholesterol. Alright. <laughs> Mostly. What's next? Let's add some canned diced tomatoes. Alright. Alright, so we've made the decision. We're keeping the fat. Alright, and these are also sugar free. Yes. No, or no sugar added. No sugar added. Correct. And, uh, no no banned preservatives. I think that um, banned preservatives. Yeah. For the so diet. You're not supposed. Yeah, for the diet, you're not supposed to eat any chemical preservatives. But this has got calcium chloride, which is a little bit different than sodium chloride, which is table salt. Um, it's got sea salt and it's got just citric acid. Probably helps to help retain its color. So that's just bulking up the vegetable content. We can probably go ahead and add the add the tomato sauce. We got What's three your jars of it. Do we want to? We probably could get away with two. We want to do the garlic and basil and mix it up. Uh, you're the boss, boss. You're the little boss. I'm the little boss. When when my parents would uh, tell us. You know, when my dad would, you know, be joking around with us and would look at us and go, I'm the boss. She was the only one gutsy enough to go, I'm the boss. And so I get this big wide eyed look like, how is this going to play out? And he got down lower and, you know, being a dad the way that he is, he, uh, he got a little bit louder and said, I'm the boss. And so she goes, I'm the little boss. And uh, that's kind of stuck. This is my big sister, the little boss. <laughs> I've tried bossing you around for a long time. I don't know why it never wound up working at the end. Uh, probably because you got big enough to pick me up and throw me. <laughs> uh, kind of ruined it. We here at Prep to Thrive do not condone throwing sisters. So, 
We can swap. Okay, so with with spaghetti squash, the strands of squash go this direction. So a, a lot of people cut it this way, but um, that in, that ends up making shorter strands because inevitably inevitably you're breaking them up anyway. So let's let's try cutting it this way. Ooh. It is very cooked. Get as many seeds as we can out of the way. Right. Sometimes when sometimes when you grow squash, actually, and I've gotten some at the store like this. There, um, it's like they've had some kind of unauthorized reproduction with some other kind of squash and they get a little sweeter than they ought to be your spaghetti squash should not be sweet how do you like that as compared to like pasta well i like it that it doesn't set me up to um binge on white pasta and end up eating you know five thousand calories and <laughs> feeling sick um, this, this just doesn't, it's, it doesn't do the same thing to my brain, which, you know, it means that it's not as delicious and it's not as nothingness tasting. It definitely, it's definitely a vegetable. Gotcha. Um, I'm about the same way. Like it, mm -hmm. it's its own thing. Um. We, uh, now that we're done with the Whole30, mm -hmm. uh, we tried out, you know, a little bit more holistically uh, pancakes this morning, minus the dairy. Yeah. And they were made out of uh, almonds, like the, the batter was. Yeah. Uh, we got it at Earth Fair, and uh, it turned out pretty good, but it wasn't anything like, like, you know, plain batter pancakes. They... It almost tasted more like an almond cookie. Really? So sometimes it feels like some of these substitutions are shooting to try to taste what it's replacing. And sometimes you just kind of got to accept, you know, what it is. Exactly. And uh, I mean, as, as the substitution, you're like, wow, this is really good. It's not quite like a noodle, but I mean, yeah, it's its own thing. Yeah. That's it. There's, there's a phrase for that, isn't there? Like, higher success through lowered expectations. <laughs> Is that's, that how it goes? It's my personal motto. <laughs> Probably could be worded a little better. <laughs> Woo! So do you usually just want to do, like, two or three of these things? For all right, you got eight servings here. Yeah. How many would well, you serve to each person? Well, I was thinking that um, that we would end up with yeah that eight servings, but I usually cook a medium-sized spaghetti squash, and I would consider the first one a large, and the second one a small. So you know we're we're averaging. Oh, look how beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's stringing up just like it's supposed to. Have you ever cooked one and then had it like just come out in chunks and be all everything stuck together weird? I think we made one spaghetti squash throughout the entire Whole30. That's not one of my go-to vegetables. No. Uh, well, like I said, I, my, you know, our, <laughs> I was about to say my mom. Our mom used to make that here and there, but it was a, it was kind of a rarity when she was doing some kind of diet or something. Mm -hmm. um, ever since we did the Whole30, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm more apt to try something like that. As long as I'm staying away from sugars, it's like all the other regular foods that I'm eating mm -hmm. tend to taste a bit better. Well, that's encouraging. It is encouraging. Yeah. But I mean... When I was doing the Whole30, the things that I were, was eating that were compliant, I tended to, uh, to go towards like things that I knew and strip them down to the bare bones. 
made them with real food. Um, and of course, we can we can do that, and we can cover some of that if you'd ever want to go mm -hmm. over how I make steaks or even barbecue. And if if anybody at home wants to see steaks or how to make perfect perfect barbecue, I mean, that's kind of what I do. Like it took me. It took me a lot of bad barbecue before <laughs> you can wind up making good barbecue. And uh, I'm not one of those purists that can actually make it, like, putting the wooden logs in, but uh, I work a mean pellet grill. <laughs> pellet smoker, sorry. So yeah, if I can teach Ben how to eat more whole foods, he can teach me how to not ruin meat. <laughs> uh, Temperatures, sometimes it's a, it's a whole different experience when you cook something slow uh, versus how quick you cook something. Like right now, your settings go up to what? Six and then high. Six and so then high. Seven. So I've got oh. it on like a solid five. Nobody's Squash walking. Down. <laughs> Squash down. Nobody's walking. You're not going to feed that to your kids, are you? That's <laughs> Why do you think their immune systems are so good? Pile of squash and a pile of mess. Do you mess normally just dump that in, or you do it kind of like where you you get the plate and then you put the meat sauce on top? Well, it looks prettier to do it that way, but I feel like if we put it down into the sauce, it would absorb it and taste better. So I usually do that, and then I concur. Um, yeah, we can either continue to cook it or. A lot of people bake this with cheese on it, but dairy, yeah. dairy's not in the um, dairy's not in the equa equation. Yeah, because I was looking at this, going, man, Parmesan cheese would be good on this. Well, you're you're after the diet, so if anybody watching is doing the whole thirty, just don't go for the Parmesan cheese. Yeah. Don't think about Parmesan cheese. Ooh, I should make you try nutritional yeast. Most, what? Most people think it's disgusting. I like it. Barry likes it. Nutritional, <laughs> nutritional, nutritional yeast. yeast. Yes, it's. That uh, sounds disgusting. <laughs> you eat yeast in bread? Yeah. I don't think it's disgusting. Okay, so it's high in B vitamins. At the end of this, we'll, we'll make you try some nutritional yeast. Uh, is this going to be like kombucha? Probably worse. Hey, kombucha is awesome. <laughs> Oh. If by awesome you mean terrible, then yes, it is awesome. <laughs> well, uh, it looks out. like I'm. I did not do a good job getting all of the seeds out, and well, oh, you're fired. Fired. Yeah. You just, I slop some. You just slop some down into the bottom. <laughs> That's not my kitchen. This is true. This is true. <sighs> Alright. All right. All right. Looks like we're done. Yes. And it's a little bit soupy, which I totally don't mind. Um, because I'm kind of lazy. I like things to go together pretty quickly. Um, I think that if you cooked up the squash and like laid it out on a sheet pan or something you probably could toast it in the oven a little bit and flash off a lot of that excess moisture if you if you know if you weren't into that but uh let's let's go ahead and have you um try it and i really want to put like just a little bit of nutritional yeast on on one little bit after you try it without uh, okay just, just, just so we can film your face i'll try oh no i'll try everything once All right, first bite, non-yeast. Non-yeast. Here we go. It was good. It's good. Very good. Yeah. Let's ruin that. <laughs> go ahead and <laughs> go ahead and put a little bit of nutritional yeast there. Oh, separate out like oh, one separate bite. Out, like... There you go. Okay. This is. And what? Why? This is what people do if they can't have dairy and they want something that's cheesy flavored. I 
I don't hate that. That's not bad. All right. I kind of like it on roasted um, cauliflower. You talked it up like I was going to hate this stuff. Let me try Some a little bit more. Some people really hate it. Carly really hates it. <laughs> Oh, 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 sorry. I I inverted the children. It was Bruce really hates it. <laughs> I'm trying it a little bit more. Hi. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. Nah, if you're looking for something kind of like Parmesan adjacent, I would describe that. It's pretty good. Let's grow up. <laughs>